Good morning, Ten Mile Baptist Church. Welcome today to our service. We are excited about being together in God's house. Even though we're not inside the service today, inside our sanctuary, we're glad all of you chose to come and drive up today. For those of you listening by live streaming, we welcome you to our service. For those listening uh, uh, and looking in on Facebook and uh, the recording for... Uh, Recording for uh, YouTube, we are glad that you tuned in. If you're visiting with us outside first time, we're glad you chose to come and, uh, and be a part of our service today. We hope everybody will be blessed by, by being here today. We're going to sing a little bit this morning. Got one special a little later. And just enjoy our time together in God's house. Let's take your hymn and turn number 75. Everybody knows this old hymn, He Lives Within My Heart. I hope He lives within your heart today. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. so glad that God sent his son to die for us today. All right, if you're in the parking lot out there and you're excited about being at 10 Mile Baptist Church, let me hear some horns. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's sweet music to our ears inside and uh, hopefully it won't be but a few more weeks and we'll be able to be back inside God's house. I want to, I want to uh, take a moment to uh, uh, look at some birthdays. Uh, Marky Foster's having a birthday uh, on the 25th, and that's the only one we we have listed. There's no anniversaries listed uh, from today through Saturday. It's coming Saturday. But however, we we missed last week. I had an old list, and I uh, did not get recognition to our pastor and the first lady of our church, and they had an anniversary on the 21st. 49 years they had anniversary, and so we, uh, we wish God's blessings on, on uh, Brother Tim and Miss Sandra for, uh, 
for many more years together. And also, also, uh, Miss Sandra had a birthday yesterday, and we uh, did not recognize her either. So anyway, we wish uh, Miss Sandra, our pastor's wife, a very happy belated birthday, and wish God's blessings on you for many more years to come. And we're excited uh, to have uh, Brother Tim and uh, Miss Sandra here in our services with us here as our pastor and first lady. All right. At this time, I'm going to ask our youth pastor, Brother Austin, come on up and uh, give us your announcements. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm glad to see you this morning. I haven't come out to visit you quite yet, but I will before the service is over. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick announcement about our youth again. Uh, we are having the Zoom meeting again today at 4 o'clock. I will send out uh, the password. It's the same as last week. So if you have it from last week, you'll get the same message from me uh, today that gives you the same code and the same password. So uh, if you want to ignore me today, that's fine. As long as you have the code and the password uh, from last week, you can get in uh, to the Zoom meeting. We have been doing very well. Uh, with our Zoom meetings every week. It seems like we get more young people to come in and uh, be a part of our class. So I'm excited about that, thankful that we have the technology to do that. But uh, remember to join us at 4 o'clock this afternoon for our Zoom meeting. We are going through the book of James, uh, trying to learn how to live a Christian life. So uh, that's very important that your children are in that, uh, your teenagers are in that class. Uh, last week I said if any adults wanted to join us, they were more than welcome to join us, and that's, that's still true. Uh, if you uh, want to be a part of that class uh, and listen to me teach, not, it's not uh, all that great, but uh, you can listen in. Uh, I just need to know so that I can send you the code as well. So, uh, but that's today at 4 o'clock. Brother Cecil. All right, thank you, Brother Austin. And I uh, want to also just add in there, Miss Lois uh, started up the bulletin again uh, today, and uh, Brother Mark is uh, passing those out to all the vehicles, just to give you an update on all the things that are going on here in the life of our church. So they'll be coming around, and also Brother Mark, and uh, he has someone else helping him, will be taking up the offering here on, on our second song that we're about to sing. So. Uh, they'll be coming around to your vehicles, uh, and we're glad that you came today. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's so good to be able to say that God loves us and that we love God and we try to serve him in a way that's pleasing to him, and that's, that's very, uh, very important as we walk through this, uh, this life. I'm going to ask Brother Chuck Prine behind me, if you would, to voice a prayer for us today, brother. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I come before your throne of grace this morning, Lord, just thanking you, Father, for the many blessings, Father, that you've sent our way this past week. And God, it's just what an honor and a privilege, Father, to be back in your house worshiping you today. Father, I just pray, God, that you would be with uh, all those, Father, that's been mentioned, Father, that's uh, on our sick list, Father, those that's got the, the COVID, Father, those that just have sicknesses and Father, I just pray, God, that you would just comfort the bereaved today. And, Lord, and I just thank you, God, for, Lord, all that you do for us each and every day. And, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for, as I said, Father, just to be back, Father, in your house, Father, singing praises to you. And I pray, God, that you would be with Brother Tim here in a little while, Father, as he will stand to bring the message. Father, that you just use him in a mighty way this morning, Father, to... Father, to relay the word, God, that the, someone in our midst today, Father, or on YouTube or uh, Father that's watching, God, if they're lost, that Father, since be the day, Father, that they'd come to know Jesus and the free pardon of sin. Father, we love you and thank you for all that you do for us. I just ask you now just to lead, guide, and direct in our service. Father, give us a glorious day in which to worship you. And Father, we thank all these things, Father, in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. And uh, just want to let you know, we are a small country church located in Perkinston, Mississippi, which is in Stone County, about 30 miles north of the Gulf of Mexico. We do have a couple of storms that are sorting ahead in this direction, and we, uh, 
We ask God's mercy on us all the way across to Texas and, and uh, that he'll look down upon us and uh, keep us all safe during the storm. Let's take a hymn once again, sing another old hymn that we all love. Number 74, At Calvary, Years I Spent in Vanity and Pride, Miss Lois. coming and singing behind me today and giving a little music to our to our broadcast we are so thankful for our our choir members and uh, at this time I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna ask one of our uh, choir members to come and sing a special for her, sister Liz, uh, Liz Parker and she is uh, she is a wife of of our sound engineer he's doing a great job I appreciate brother guy and everything that he does to, to get our streaming services, our recordings all on the air, and him and Brother Austin, our youth pastor, worked, worked hard to get that done, and I appreciate that personally. Sister Liz, come on and sing one for us, and after this, we'll turn it over to our pastor, Brother Tim Parker. I'm not sure who the song is for, but I, I guess it's for me. It's been on my mind all week. So I'm just thankful that Jesus passed by.
praise God, it's gone, and I am free. Looking for tomorrow, where no tears will dim the eye. Well, oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. Jesus passed by my way, and he gave me hope that day. Just a sinner was I, but then Jesus passed by, and oh, what a change. this morning, my daughter-in-law, that's my Yankee daughter-in-law, amen, best daughter-in-law I got, amen, happen to be the only one I got, I don't know how many, I don't know if folks can stand more than one or not, amen, <laughs> amen, good to be saved this morning, I know you've seen me wandering around in here, I have to go out and greet folks and see who's here and who's not here and all that stuff. But Hey, I got my ears, Lord, this week. My granddaughter finally repented and got right and come cut my hair. Thank you, Josie. At least I don't feel like a hippie. I may still look like one. That's probably not safe to say in this stage in which we live, to use that term. But uh, I, uh, but Chuck got one, too. Well, you didn't get your money's worth. But uh, good to be in God's house this morning. You glad you're able to drive up today? Just one more week, amen, one more Sunday in this drive up and a couple of more Wednesday nights and the first Sunday in September. If all of you behave yourself, we moving back in the building, amen. Now, I do want to warn you that we're going to try to be careful. Uh, uh, we'll be checking temperatures uh, we we'll, we have masks available if you're more comfortable wearing a mask, and uh, I'm on I'm on a, I'm gonna try not to uh, promote hugging and all that stuff. My wife told me yesterday. Said, you know, you're the primary reason that people love on each other, right? That they see you do it and they think it's okay for them to do it. And so I'm gonna try to be better in that area. Uh, I, I'm not promising you that I will. It's just hard for me, but uh, that'll be the first Sunday in September. We'll be back inside the building. Amen. Uh, thank you for praying for us this week. Some prayer requests this morning. Uh, pray for Tyler Allen. That's some of Brother Kenneth and Miss Helen's kin folks was in a bad four-wheeler accident last night and uh, was in ICU for a minute, but for a little while, but I think they've moved them since then, and they're doing better. Brother Larry Robertson, pray for him. He uh, he got transferred down to Memorial on the coast yesterday. Earlier in the week, Brother Larry got attacked by a wild cat. They got him in his leg, and they had him over at Stone. And, and like all you Robertsons, his heart went into Afib. Amen. That's, that's the most amazing, one of the most amazing things I've ever been around. I think all the males in that family have that problem. But at any rate, uh, got a report this morning. Sister June's out in the vehicle this morning and said Brother Larry was doing better. Uh, so you continue to pray for him. Brother Donnell is still in the hospital at Hattiesburg, uh, still having some issues with his heart getting out of rhythm, running away. Uh, they're trying to treat that with medication. Sister Debbie Raglan asked you to continue to pray for her. She's not done well this week. The last time I spoke with Brother Mike, he was very discouraged, and uh, so I asked you to pray for that family and for Brother Bob Tapper. Uh, continue to pray for him. He's making improvement, but it's very slow. They've got him on about 40% on the ventilator now. and uh, But he is responding, moving, and expressing a desire to move around some, so that's a good thing. So you continue to pray for him. And then Sister Sandra, uh, we're waiting to hear from the doctors to get her surgery scheduled. 
So you be praying for her. She and I had an anniversary and she had a birthday, amen. She's older than me now. Uh, she, I told her yesterday, I said, you're always older than me. It's just a matter of, uh, but right now she's a year older than I am. Amen. Uh, she's, she's nearing another one of them milestones. But we, listen, we have known each other over a century. That's unbelievable. We celebrated our 49th wedding anniversary, Friday. Yeah, I took her out to eat. Cared her, she and I made a 95-mile drive to go to a Chinese restaurant that we like to eat at. And uh, I took her that far to feed her anniversary. We enjoyed that together. And then, yeah, I took her out again last night for her birthday. And then the kids tried to surprise her Thursday night with a meal at Lisa's. They didn't, we didn't surprise her. Uh, she figured it out, but at any rate, we had a good time together as a family. But we're glad to be in God's house. Open your Bibles this morning, the Old Testament book of Daniel. The Old Testament book of Daniel. I want to look at a very familiar story this morning in Daniel chapter number 3. The story of those three Hebrew children. And I want to, I want to try to, to draw some conclusions, if you will, from this story of how to have a faith that really works. James said this, faith without works is dead. Uh, we know that we're saved by grace through faith. We understand the Bible's very clear on that. But faith that brings salvation also will produce some evidence in our life. There will be some things that people can see. Uh, another, and, and I just jotted this down this morning, I was sitting at my desk and going over the thoughts of this and and, and because of the, the story, and you know the story in Daniel chapter 3 of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they get thrown into the fiery furnace. And so I, I thought I'd give it a little catchy title. And, uh, and so I wrote this down, How to Get God in the Fire with You. Amen. How to Get God in the Fire with You. Sometimes things come along in our lives that makes us feel like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that we have been thrown into the fiery furnace. Well, I'm glad to report to you today, just as surely as God was in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God will get in the fire with us. And I'm glad that he will. I'm glad that he will. I'm going to begin reading. I'm going to read a few verses today. I'm going to start in verse number 13 and read down through the balance of the chapter. So, had an old preacher tell me a long time ago, told a group of us young preachers, he said, uh, sometimes it's good to read a lot of scripture when you're going to preach. That way if you get persecuted in one verse, you can flee to another one. Amen. So sometimes I do read quite a bit, and I'm going to in this story this morning. The Bible says in verse number 13, uh, then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready that at what Time you hear the sound of the cornet and the flute and the harp and the sat belt and the psaltery and the dulcimer and all kinds of music. You fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. 
But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. The form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in, in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats and their hoes and their hats and their outer, other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men which took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. And he rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselor, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. I like verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. I say hallelujah. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, the governors, and captains of the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had had no power. Nor was the hair of their heads singed. Neither was their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and hath delivered his servant that trusted in him and hath changed the king's word and yielded their body that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speak anything amidst against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Father, we love you this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to be back in your house, Lord, to be live streaming and recording and, Lord, going out to the radio to those outside in the parking lot. Lord, what a tremendous story we read in the Bible. God, I'm glad today that you give us these stories in the Bible. Lord, so that it can increase our faith and encourage us in our spirit. That, God, when we find ourselves in the midst of the fire, God, we know from this story, God, that you're going to be in the midst of the fire with us. Lord, help us to look at our faith today. and See, dear God, if we have the faith that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. Lord, see if we have our faith in the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that this old pagan king declared that nobody should speak a word against the God of heaven. God, we need, we need Lord, we need some men to stand up today Lord, make that declaration in the United States of America that you better not speak a word against the God of heaven, the God of glory. Father, I pray today you'd help us as we listen today and hear what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. May I say to you today, this is not a fictional story. There are no fictional stories found in the Bible because God don't write fiction. Amen. God, God, God's book is a book of truth. And so everything that I find in this Bible 
the living, life-breathing, life-changing Word of God, I can, I can count on one thing. Brother Austin, I can count on the fact that it's true. It's not, it's not a story made up for entertainment. My, my wife is an avid reader. Sometimes I'll ask her, is that story you're reading true or is it something somebody made up? Sometimes she'll say it's based on a true story. Sometimes she'll say, well, it's, it's, it's a made up story. And, and, and listen to me, I'm glad to report to you today this blessed old book that I hold in my hand has no made up stories, Amen. As one old preacher said, it's, it's truth from cover to cover, amen? From the book of Genesis all the way to the end of the book of the Revelation, it is true. Now listen to me, the truth of the matter is most of our life, most of our life is lived in a pretty smooth environment, if you will. Sometimes it almost seems as if life can get boring. We we'll go through the same old routine, we... We, 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 we have the same pattern. We go do about everything the same day by day. And with that being the case, most of the time, there's not much test to our faith. Our faith is not tried. Our faith is not, it's not put to the test, if you will. Most of the time, our life is such that even the outside world has difficulty seeing our faith. Oh, they hear us talk about it. They, they, they know that we come to church and they know that is a part of our expression of our faith. But the truth of the matter is, for most part, most of the time our life is just kind of routine. We go through it day by day. We, we know how to make it through. We may hit a little bump every once in a while. But I want you to know in these three young men's life, there come a great opportunity for them to put their faith on display. I am not sure that in the midst of this pandemic that God's not giving some of us an opportunity for our faith to be put on display. I, I watch and anticipate the upcoming elections for President and Vice President of the United States. Man, what a mess we got. What an absolute mess we've got in America. I hate to have to say that, but I'm telling you, we have got a mess in America. I, I, I cannot help but wonder, Brother Kenneth, if maybe God may not be setting the stage for us where that our faith can be put on display like these three young men's faith was put on display. I want to look at some thoughts concerning this. And maybe it will encourage us. I, 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 listen, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I do know this. I know who holds tomorrow. The old song says that. There are many things about tomorrow I don't understand. And I, it ain't even here yet. I know, I know some of the things I have planned for tomorrow, but, but they may not come to pass. But, I, but I'm planning for them to. But I do know this, if, if tomorrow gets up and it don't go anything like I thought it would, I know, I know whose hands it's in, and I know whose hands I'm in. And so I want to look at these thoughts concerning this great story of these young men. Suddenly, unexpectedly, a test come. From probably from their mind, what would, have, what would have seemed to be the least expected place that that test would come. It come from government. It come from those in authority. It come from those that sit in a position that had the power and the authority to do what we know that was done in this, this golden image being set up. And, 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 and truth of the matter is, this whole thing was designed by the enemy against these godly people. In Daniel's day, Daniel being one of them, these three men, I believe there were probably more than that. We only have four of them that are named. But I believe that probably, well, in fact, I know that there was a, if you'll allow me to use this word, there was a conspiracy against these godly folks. And, and, and they, they, had a, they, had a, they had a king like most kings that was, if you will, always want to be in the limelight. Kind of sounds like some of our politicians today. Amen. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever little sound bite they can get, Brother Austin, to 
get, get a few more minutes in the, in the public eye sounds a whole lot like where we're at today. Well, somebody comes to Nebuchadnezzar and says, hey, you know, you got these guys. I, I, I believe we ought, to, we ought to set up a golden image of you, and I believe everybody ought to have to worship you. Listen to me, there's, there's, not, very, there's not very many politicians around today that, that it's not their desire that folks fall down before them. Amen. I realize some may not like that, and, and uh, I know if it got into the ears of some of our politicians today, they wouldn't like that, but uh, that's, that's just the way it is. And so this King Nebuchadnezzar liked the idea. They set the image up, set it a certain time. When you hear, I, I thought it was interesting as I was reading through this uh, the other day, and again this morning it jumped out at me. I, I found it interesting that they... That, that the, the signal for all for this worshiping of King Nebuchadnezzar was brought about. I, I want I want I want by all kinds of music. It was signified it's time to do it. Now I, I, I don't know the harmony of this. I don't I, I, I do know very little about music. That's not hard to figure out, but there was a lot of different instruments playing, but I cannot help but believe that quite possibly these instruments may have all been playing a little different tune. <clears throat> kind of like where it is in the, uh, and I hate to say this today, but sometimes it's kind of confusing like that within the confines of what some folks call church today. A lot of racket, a lot of noise. I kind of believe that may have been the way it was here. Now, it ain't that way here at Ten Mile. We got a great music director. We still sing the old gospel hymns. Amen. Our specials, our folks, listen, they look for something that will glorify God. Amen. We're not, we're not here to entertain folks. Amen. We're here to try to, to promote the, the gospel and encourage the heart through good gospel singing and let it speak to our heart. But uh, let me get to the gist of the message today. What about this faith? Why was it, brother? Chuck, that God was willing to get into the fire with these three Hebrew children. Well, number one, the faith of these men operates when it can be costly. The decree has already been given. Those that do not fall down and worship you, O king, they're going to be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. So these young men face the situation of where their faith could be costly for them. Don't take a whole lot of faith when the doctor gives you a bottle full of pills and says, go home and take this bottle full of pills and you're going to be fine. Don't take a whole lot of faith when the doctor says, yeah, we're going to have to do surgery, but boy, we've done this so many times, it's just routine. We almost do it with our eyes closed. When the doctor walks in the room, sits down, looks at you, says, you know what, there's something there I'm pretty concerned about. This, this, the results of this could be unpleasant. The results of this biopsy we're going to do, it may not, it may not come out favorable. I don't like the looks of this thing. That's when, that's when faith has the potential to become costly. I don't. I pray to God it don't happen. But if they don't, if, if if something don't happen spiritually in America, I'm afraid we're headed to a place just like this, where where you and I that 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 claim to be and profess to be the children of God, there may I believe at some point come a mandate from the government that will test our faith, and we're going to find out if we're willing to pay the price to demonstrate our faith, to show to the world that our faith is not just something that comes out of our mouth, that it's not just a, it's not just a phrase that we express. It's not just a cliche that the world is used to hearing. But it may very well be that it comes to the day where, Brother Austin, we, we, we're going to find out if the faith that we've got will operate when it can be costly. I'm talking about a working faith. I'm talking about a faith that works in the midst of the trial. It operates when it can be costly. These young men were 
very convincing in their response. Second thing that I want you to consider about this faith that will get God into the fire with you. We find in verses 17 and 18 where the three Hebrew children saying, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Watch verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said this. They believe death is better than compromise. I heard one horn blow. I said the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego declared that death is better than compromise. That's the kind of faith that will get God into the fiery furnace with you. That, that's the kind of faith, my friend, where you can stand and declare to those that, at, 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 listen, it's, it's already, it's already, I encourage they, I mean, you listen, if you listen to that crowd, that anti-God crowd today, amen, for a long time, they've been, they've been working to move in God we trust off of our money, even though it is nothing more than just a saying for the most part, particularly as a nation as a whole. You know, I, I know one of the things that our governor has said must be on the, State flag of Mississippi, the new state flag of Mississippi, it must have that phrase in it. In God we trust, I'm afraid, Brother Austin, that far too often that's just a phrase that we like to throw about. If that, if that stands, I'll be surprised because I believe it'll be challenged. I believe, I believe that anti-God crowd will say, Oh no, we, that, that can't be on our state flag. May I say to you, these three Hebrew children had a faith that brought God into the fire with them because they believed that death was better than compromise. Now listen to me, I'm not talking about having a desire to become a martyr. That's not what I'm talking about. But one thing, one thing that's needed, if you will, in our soft society is we need some people who will live what they profess. I'm talking about, I'm talking about out in the everyday world. Christianity, salvation, living right, doing right is quite easy to do in the confines of the church. But when we get out where the enemy's at, are we willing to be cast into that burning, fiery furnace? Do we have a faith that's willing to, to continue to operate when the, when the price, when the cost could be costly out in the... How about in your job? Some of you that work out in the public... How about in your job, in your workplace? Is your faith such that you're willing to stand for your faith even when it could be costly? Is our faith such that as these three men who believe that death is better than compromise? Let me tell you something today. One of the reasons America has been so blessed because back in the early days of this country, there were some folks that believed that death was better than compromise. There was things going on over in, the, over in England and that part of the world that was, was being restrictive. There were some things being put upon them, kind of like here in the book of Daniel, where that, that they were being mandated how they could worship and who they could worship. Thank God there was a group of folks who said, hey, you know what? Compromise is not an option here. Death, I'll take death over compromise. So with the blessings and the help of God, there's a group of people, Brother Austin, that set out to what we call the United States of America today. It was not called that then. They set out to that new world, and they, they, they understood that, hey, what I believe Concerning my relationship with God and my faith in Him, I'd rather die than compromise and have somebody else tell me when and how I can worship. Early on in the days of our country, there were many 
history of Christianity, the history of, 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 of salvation and Bible believing Christians. You, you, read, you read the history. There have been many of them. These were not the only ones. There have been many that have said, I, I, I'll die before I'll compromise. Number three, verses 17 and 18 also tell us today that their faith was sound and not sensational. There's a lot of emphasis today put upon sensation, feelings. Amen? The excitement, the, the glamour, the, the, the bright lights and all of that, even in the church world today, Today, there's much emphasis put upon, if you will, feelings. These folks had a faith that was sound. I mean, I, 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 love, I love what they say in verse 18, be it, but if not, hey, we're believing God to deliver us, but if He chooses to let us perish in that burning, fiery furnace, there's one thing we know for sure, we'll be out of your hand. You'll no longer be able to dictate to us what we can and cannot do. May I say to you, that is a faith that's sound, not sensational. That's, that's a faith that, that, that'll, that'll bring God into the fire with you. Here, here was their, here's, here, here's what their faith said to them. We're going we to keep, just go on and keep doing what we know is right. They knew that it was right for them not to worship this golden image. They knew in spite of the, of the moving of the emotions with the music, Brother Austin, they knew that their heart had to still be in tune with God. And they're just going to keep doing what was right. Might be a good time to pose the question here. What, is, what, is what your faith causing you to do? Is it right according to the Word of God? I thought about this thought and this, this I really don't even know how to express what I want to say. Because it has, over, over the last few months in our country, there have been a lot of demonstrations and marches and all of that stuff related to to stuff in the world that people believe is an injustice. And I thought about this. It's easier, it's easier to get a, a Christian to march in a protest than it is for them to get them to fulfill what Acts 5.42 says. What does Acts 5.42? It says this, And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. Folks that call themselves Christians will rally around all kind of causes. But this book teaches us that daily, daily, our faith ought to be expressed in the temple and from house to house we ought to be preaching and teaching Jesus Christ. So we see that their faith that got God in the fire with them was a faith that operates when the Outcome could be costly. It's a faith that believes that death is better than compromise. It's a faith that is sound and not sensational. And I want you to go to verse number 20. And I want you to understand today this faith that will get God in the fire with you is a faith that functions when God is not apparent. He commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into. You say, preacher, why didn't God just keep them from being bound? God could have. Just as surely as Jesus. Remember when Mary and Martha, and Martha said to Jesus, hey, Lord, if you'd have been here, our brother would not have died. That's, that's a true statement. He could have kept that from happening. But God had a greater purpose in mind. Amen. He, want, he, wanted to see, he wanted to see Mary and Martha's faith. He wanted, he wanted the world to see their faith. But may I say to you, this faith that will get God in the fire with you is a faith that functions when, when it doesn't seem that God's even around. I 
all too often, and I've heard it said many times in my lifetime, the critics, the cynics want to know where God is in the time of trouble. He's in the same place he was when men crucified his son. Where was, where was God when Jezebel schemed to murder Naboth? May I say to you, in that period of time, he was preparing Elijah to bring a message of judgment. God wasn't sitting around unaware of what was going on. Let me give you some good news today, friend. God's not sitting around in heaven today unaware of what's going on in the world today. I, I, it, it don't matter the nature of the fire that we may find ourselves in. May I say to you, God's not sitting around uninterested in the fire that we may be fixing to get cast into. God's busy preparing. And Elijah, and for America, I believe that's truer than it's ever been. What's going on in our country today and how God's being treated and how we're almost to the place as it was in the day of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when folks believe they can order us to bow down and worship them. You know, I, I believe I can say this today without hesitation. They may not be verbally saying it yet, but I promise you we're surrounded by them in our political realm today that that's what they want. They want to bring us to a place to where we've got to bow down and worship them. Be aware. It may seem like God's unaware of what's going on, but he may be preparing Elijah to come and talk about judgment. Thought about this, where was, the question might be asked, where was God when John was banished to the Isle of Patmos? <laughs> Remember that story, John the Revelator? When he, got, when he got banished to the Isle of Patmos, let me tell you where God was. He was getting pen and paper ready for John to write the book of the Revelation. <laughs> Brother Kenneth, he's gathering up. May I say to you, he's getting pen and paper ready so that that man of God, amen, could declare a, may I say to you, he could, he could declare a, a message of that the vast majority of that book deals with judgment. And John wrote it. But he also in that message in Revelation 1, verse 17, turn there in your Bibles with me and let's look at that for just a moment. Revelation chapter 1, I believe it's verse 17. We find John as he as, as he as he sees as he sees the Lord and, and he falls down he falls down before the Lord and he says and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead and notice what it says and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not I am the first and the last you know what brought that response the faith of John. Amen. The faith of John. May I say to you, this faith that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it continued to function when it looked like God didn't even know what was going on in their life. Fear not. I am the first and the last. And then I want you to notice in verse 24, 25, the Bible says then, Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselor, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said unto the king, True, O king. What they said was, hey, you got the count right. That's what we have, one, two, three. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form is like the Son of God. I cannot answer this question. But I'm often asked this question of myself. Maybe some of you Bible scholars can. How do you know what the Son of God looked like? He's a pagan, heathen king. How in the world he get a view of what God looked like? Quite an interesting question, isn't it? Well, let me give you let me give you what I believe is a fair answer. He saw. 
what the Son of God looked like in the lives of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He saw it in them. He said, hey, you know what? All this can be is what the God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego has been serving. Painted a pretty good picture, did they not? Their faith painted a pretty good picture of the Son of God. Then I want you to go down to verse number 30. I want you to see the final thing about this faith. This faith that will get God into the fire with you. Then the king, what's that word? Promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. I want you to understand something today, children of God. This is a faith that pays off. It pays dividends, if you will. <clears throat> I, listen, I, I, I have... Uh, I have all the confidence in the world in God, but there's a, there's a name and claim of the prosperity gospel that's preached all over our land today that kind of goes contrary to what we see here. These men got promoted, but they didn't get promoted until they demonstrated a faith that would get God into the fire with them. We want this easy, we want this easy, God owes it to me mentality that God's promised it to me mentality that all I got to do is just find a verse in the Bible for it and lay hold to it. May I say to you, if you study this Bible, men who demonstrated that God was in the fire with them, they, they were willing, they were willing, they had a willingness, amen. Brother, Brother Chuck, to, to, to understand that the cost, the outcome could be costly. They said, you know what, I'm just going to keep believing God. They believed that death was better than compromise. Ecumenicalism has about destroyed the church in America today. Oh, let's all tie up and be one great, big, happy family. I'm sorry, friend. If what you believe goes against this book, I can't tie up with you. And I'm not going to tie up with you. Oh, what we hear today is a bunch of sensationalism, a bunch of noise. Be kind of like each of us picking up one of these musical instruments that we've never, that, that's listed here in this story. Brother, Brother Kenneth, be kind of like me and you and Brother James and Brother Dale and Brother Sonny Dido picking, each one of us picking one up and just start making noise on it. Faith that will get God into the fire where he is a faith that's a function when God cannot be seen. And thank God it's a faith that pays off. It's a faith that's personal. I'm glad to report to you today I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to experience some of these fires. Nothing like these men have. No, 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 no. Wouldn't even think about putting myself in the place where they were at. But I have had some fires in my life, and I'm glad to report to you today that I found God in the fire with me. Experience, personal experience. Pays off in personal experience. Because of some of those things in my own life, Helps me to know the next time the fire's coming, that if my faith is what it ought to be, God's going to be in the midst of that fire as well. But it also pays off an influence. These men's faith, may I say to you, their God was vindicated. But the Babylonians' God of fire was defeated. Our God got vindicated. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's living true God got vindicated. The God of the Babylonians, the God of fire, was defeated. He throwed his best at them. <laughs> if you will, he throwed his worst at them. It did not affect them. had no effect on them. I can imagine... 
Brother Austin and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were set loose, and the king declared that, hey, anybody that speaks a word against this God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're not going to like the outcome. They're going to they gonna find out the wrath of the king. I can imagine, Brother Kenneth, as those three men walked through the kingdom, and somebody would be pointing and say, hey, there's, isn't that Shadrach? Isn't that Meshach? Isn't that Abednego? Isn't that the ones that we put in the fiery furnace? No doubt, Brother Austin, probably there was some folks who come to him and might ask this question, can you tell me what that was like? And they got an opportunity to do what? Have an influence on in the life of somebody else and declare, and declare and bring glory to their God, the God that pays off, amen. And then last but not least, this thing paid off in a promotion for these three young Children of God. Looking for a promotion? <laughs> Make sure your faith is such. Make sure your faith is such that will get God in the fire with you when the trial comes. Father, we love you today. Thank you for your great mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord, for these tremendous stories, truths about real people living life God, that you've chosen to put in the Bible, Lord, to help us. God, it's encouraged my heart as I read and studied and prepared this. Lord, I, I don't know, again, I don't know what tomorrow holds. Lord, I could find myself tomorrow in a place, Lord, to where my faith will be have the opportunity to be displayed. God, help me that my faith might be such that you'll be in the fire with me. God, I pray today. I know you said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. But God, I believe sometimes you want to put us in places and allow us to be in places, God, where others can see our faith, not just we ourselves or not just within the confines of the, of the church of the living God, but God, uh, out in the world, Lord, where, where we're at every day, where the unsaved are at, where the, where the atheists and the agnostic and God, the doubters and the and the naysayers, God, where all that crowd's at. God, those that are intent on silencing us, those that are intent, dear God, on doing away with Christianity in America, doing away with in God we trust, removing any mention of God in our society. God, in the, in the midst of them, in the face of them, God, may our faith be such that we'll get you into the fire with us. We love you. Thank you for helping us today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, you come through now. We're going to be out on the